Hello everybody, my name is Keita and welcome back to My Kingdom. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a fursuit friendly reference sheet. I am starting up a fursuit making tutorial series where I show you the process that I go through when creating a fursuit. Um, so one of the very first steps you need to take before creating a suit is having a fursuit friendly character design that you can actually turn into that fursuit. Over the course of this video I'm going to be explaining to you how I create my fursuit friendly characters as well as fursuit friendly ref sheets. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing that you're going to see me do is actually have a bunch of reference photos pulled up. Uh, it is important to have reference photos when creating any work of art, um, especially fursuits. Fursuits are really detailed 3D pieces of artwork. You need to make sure that you have plenty of references for these uh, pieces of art. Um, so for this reference sheet, I want it to look as accurately proportionate to what I want the suit to look like at the very end as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm starting off with um, actual reference photos I have taken myself. Normally what I would do is I would take a duct tape dummy of the commissioner or a duct tape dummy of myself or whoever I'm making the suit for and I will then draw over top of the photo of the duct tape dummy uh, what the suit will look like on top of it so that I have a baseline of uh, the person that the suit will be made for because you can't really change much what the person looks like you can only add to it because I am actually doing this as a pre-made fursuit, I will not know who will be the future owner of this suit. So what I have done is I have taken a photograph of a duct tape dummy and fursuit that I have made previously, and I am using it as the baseline for this reference sheet, just so that I have a reference sheet for the suit in the future. Now, when a person purchases this suit from me later on, I will recreate this reference sheet with that person's duct tape dummy so that I can get a more accurate um, reference sheet just for them. I am actually also going to be using a head base. This is a Dream Vision Creations Dracubus Foam cast head base. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can purchase your own down below. And what I am doing is I have taken photos of it actually on my face. And what I am doing is I am tracing over top of it so that I can go in and digitally add all of the edits that I want to this head base before I actually go and start to craft the fursuit. This gives me an idea of the expression that I want as well as horn and ear placement as well as any other changes to the suit head that I might want to do. Um, I wind up adding a lot more foam work to uh, bases than they already have just because I like to edit them a lot. So if you plan to edit this base a lot from the base, you may want to do this so that you can get an idea of where you want to add extra padding, where you might want to take some away. The next thing that I am doing is I'm going through and drawing all of the specific parts that I'm going to be actually creating. So for this, I'm just making a partial fursuit. That involves the suit head, the hand paws, and a long floor dragger tail. So I have taken those pieces specifically and sketched out what I want them to look like in detail. So that later on, when I go to create each of these individual pieces, I have references just for them. After you've finished sketching your ref sheet, you can then go and line it. Now lining it isn't necessarily required, um, but because I am selling this character as a fursuit and the character design, I want the ref sheet to look pretty good. So what I am doing is I'm going through and lining it. If you choose to not line the rep sheet, you can just skip the lining step and go straight into the coloring and designing of the character. Because this character has very, very large ears and a very large tail, with the full body uh, images of the character, I have actually drawn two versions, one with the tail and ears and one without the tail and ears, so that you can get a very good understanding of the location of all of the markings, as well as the location of the ears and the tail. 
This is especially important with characters like this that have very large um, appendages. If the character has very, very large arms, maybe very big horns, anything like that, anything that obstructs the view of something that might be important or a marking or anything like that, you might want to draw two different versions, one with the ears, for example, and then one without the ears, showing the placement of where the ear would go if the ear was there. Next, what I am doing is I am coloring in the ref sheet. Again, there really isn't anything special about this um, other than making sure that you have references. So I actually pull up a reference of a ref sheet of this character uh, in a different proportion, so not a fursuit friendly ref sheet, um, and I am going through and coloring the patterns and colors of the character onto this reference sheet. At this time, it is really important to make sure that you have a clear color palette as well as um, a basic understanding of what kind of design you want the character to have. Of course, you can go through and experiment with different patterns and colors, and that's A-OK -okay in this stage. Um, I just so happen to have a pre-existing character design that I am going to be creating but you can totally go through and change up the colors, change up the patterns, make it however you want it, it is your character. But be sure that this is the character design you want when creating your fursuit. You don't want to get halfway through creating your fursuit and realize, hmm, I don't actually like this design, I need to change it. It will make the fursuit making process significantly longer and significantly harder. In a future video, I'm going to be showing you how to find fabrics and furs and other materials used to create fursuits. It is important when designing a character that is going to be made into a fursuit that you have the correct furs and other materials and the correct colors and lengths and textures that you want for the suit. There is not an unlimited amount of fur colors. Unfortunately, there is a very, very small range of colors when it comes to furs. So unless you want to spend a lot of money, um, either creating the furs yourself, dyeing them, getting custom ones, you may want to just be able to find pre-existing colors and textures and styles that will fit your character best. But that is for a future video. So after I have finished coloring all of the patterns onto the character, I basically just write out a few notes onto the ref sheet that are some important points to remember when creating the suit. So for example, this character doesn't have any paw pads on the bottom of its feet. This is something that you need to take into consideration when creating the fursuit. You don't want to spend your hard-earned money and time creating something that will not be used in the final product. And to kind of prove that nobody's perfect, I actually forgot a very distinct part of this character design, and that is the mask. This character actually has a bone-like mask that goes over top of their face. I actually forgot to design this. What I'm actually going to do now is sketch out the mask on top of the finished full body, um, the front facing one and the side facing one, and then I'm going to line it and color it separately. This is not a big deal. If you forget to put something on the ref sheet, it is not the end of the world. Just go ahead, sketch it, line it, color it like you would anything else, and just add it onto the ref sheet. And now we've come to the very end. Uh, basically, the finishing touches are done now, uh, like the background and an outline to the character to kind of make it pop, as well as a watermark. So I always recommend that people watermark their artwork just so that um, you can help avoid theft. It also is kind of the finishing touch to me that uh, I'm finishing this with my watermark. It is perfect. It is finished. And ta-da! We have a finished fursuit ref sheet. Of course, there are tons of other optional things that you are free to add on your own, like a color palette or a fur palette or any other kind of fabric display. So you, you basically just go and get images of the fabric that you plan to use when creating the suit. Um, literally anything you want. I hope this video was helpful in helping you kind of create your own ref sheet. If this video was helpful for you, leave me a like. So if you are excited about these uh, tutorials and you want to be notified when they come out, be sure to hit the subscribe as well as that little bell. It will give you a notification when these videos are posted. 
And until next time, guys, remember, my name is Kata, and you are always welcome back in my kingdom.